So I have in front of me a Rad Mini factory e-bike that's been heavily modified with Grin hardware already. The stock motor controller has been replaced with our phase runner, the generic display has been upgraded to a version 3 cycle analyst, and the basic pass sensor for pedal control has been upgraded with the torque sensing bottom bracket. So this e-bike system is able to do full torque sensing pedaling. Otherwise, the key hardware is still the same. It's running the same stock battery pack, and the same geared fat bike hub motor on the rear. I mean, the third part of our factory upgrade series, we're gonna be converting this geared hub motor that freewheels into a geared motor that does regen. So just like our GMAC hub motors, a geared motor with a locked clutch is capable of doing very powerful regenerative braking, allowing you to come to a stop without engaging your mechanical brakes greatly extending the longevity of your brake pads and adding superbly controllable braking in all weather conditions. So first off, we're gonna remove the wheel from the bike so that we can open up the hub motor and see how accessible the clutch is uh, before we weld it shut. So normally we'd be using a freewheel removal tool to first remove the freewheel from the side plate before we disassemble the motor. Uh, unfortunately, this is an unusual motor where the cable exits from the freewheel side of the wheel. And of course, we can't fit the freewheel tool over all of this hardware. Uh, but luckily, we can just sneak in here with the Torx driver and undo the side plate screws with the cassette or the freewheel gear still in place. Should just push right out. So here's the freewheel mechanism, and what we need to do is weld this to the hub that sits on the axle so that it's unable to spin freely. Uh, you can see our other lock clutch welding video for more tips on how to do this, otherwise to the welding station. And what we're going to do to prevent splatter. Uh, so now we reassemble the motor and just make sure nothing got distorted or warped in that process and that it still spins freely uh, and that we didn't inadvertently get a little chunk of metal in and amongst the gears. Um, So now I'm going to talk about one of the most crucial aspects of a regen system, and that's the importance of axle retention when you have back and forth torque generation. So in a normal e-bike hub motor, you're only getting torque driving the motor forwards, which causes the axle to rotate back, and that backwards rotation will bottom out against the dropouts. If you have a torque arm, it'll bottom out up against the torque arm, and it'll stay bottomed out. Now that we've added regen, as soon as we're coming to a stop, the torque on the axle reverses. And now the axle will wiggle a little bit in the other direction. You accelerate, it wiggles back. That constant force, back and forth wiggling will eventually cause the nut on your axle to wiggle itself loose. And then you have a no longer well secured wheel. Now having a torque arm helps, but it doesn't stop that because any torque arm, even a much thicker one than this thin flimsy piece of stamp metal that came with the bike, will always have or will develop a little bit of play. So one of the solutions to help remedy this is to simply tighten your axle nuts extremely tight. Uh, we've done in-house testing that showed if you tighten the nuts to about 80 newton meters of torque, uh, we'll convert that to foot pounds in a subtitle, um, you can actually get enough friction between the nut and the dropout that the axle isn't going to wiggle. You still want a torque arm as a backup, but those really tight nuts will help prevent it. The problem is that if those nuts ever do get a bit loose or you remove your wheel to fix a flat and you don't have the tools to retighten it to that force, you're going to develop this problem of the nuts eventually wiggling themselves loose. On this bike, we're actually going to be installing one of our prototype uh, regen torque arms that we're in development with here at Grin. And this is a torque arm that doesn't just slide over the axle, it actively pinches it with an enormous clamping force of two grade 12 bolts in order to anchor itself with zero wiggle to begin with. Uh, with a torque arm like this, you're not as dependent on really tight nuts to prevent that risk of axles wiggling. Now this torque arm design has a splined interface to allow orientation at different angles. And this particular bike is a little bit unique. 
um, in that it has a welded on kickstand plate. And I think it just happens that if I align it on one set of these lines, say, where am I there? There we go. Um, that the slot more or less lines up with the existing bolt. And so we can anchor the torque arm to the frame using the bolt that's there. Otherwise, you would use our standard frame clamp accessory with hose clamps in order to transfer that torque further downstream. So let's put the nut on. Now you'll see this doesn't leave a whole lot of threads on the nut, uh, so we wouldn't want to tighten this nut to that 80 Newton meter as I would otherwise recommend. Um, but we have so much meat from the torque arm itself holding that axle snug. Uh, we'll have a separate installation video for these torque arms, but one important detail is that these preloading bolts that help pinch the axle are tightened up themselves to a good torque. It's actually about 12 Newton meters that we can tighten these graded bolts, and that ensures that the clamping force on that axle is preloaded to an absolute maximum. Uh, and we recommend if you have one to use a torque wrench, but 12 Newton meters is an awful lot for a little M5 screw like this, and that's why it's important to use the supplied graded bolts that come with the kit. The last thing we're gonna do to this system is upgrade the cycle analyst. You notice when we first booted it up, it had the version 3.14 stable release firmware, but once you have a setup with Regen, there's a lot to be gained by upgrading to the 3.2 firmware, which adds capabilities like backpedal Regen and Regen speed limiting in a more sophisticated manner. Uh, so we'll roll this over, upgrade it, and then give it back to the customer. Now it's at 80%, 90%, and the countdown begins. Be ready, be ready, here we go. Boom! Woo! Set up pedal region and control mode. Let's go position. Regen steps. Let's go 12. Set up op digital, you're still filming? Oh, yeah. Okay. So digital, we're gonna do the two button control. And then the function is gonna be the region speed limit. Great. And now we're gonna set up the, I'll set that at 55. The way Raz wanted his system set up, he actually likes using the potentiometer to control the assist level. Uh, so this lets him go from zero up to eight times assistance. So the motor does eight times more power than he does with his legs at its full, uh, full maximum. And we've also configured this with the digital input setting a separate regen speed limit. Uh, so with his digital input now, you can see we can go from 22 kilometers an hour up to 55 kilometers an hour. And that's gonna enable an automatic regen going downhill and it'll keep varying and modulating that regen just to maintain a steady downhill speed. Uh, and that's quite a handy feature, especially if you're in your longer distance touring, where you're not having to squeeze the brakes on the downhill, you just capture regen automatically, and then the regen cuts out once your speed uh, has dropped below a certain amount. So Raz, I think you should go for a rip. So I've been riding this bike now for nearly two months with the locked regen clutch. I've had the phase one controller set at 70 phase amps, which translated to around 90 Newton meters of thrust force on the hub motor. Since I work at Grin, I decided to experiment a little, and so I updated the controller's regen phase amps to 90, and so that translated to around 110 Newton meters of force, which was so powerful that it actually wiggled out the bolts on the opposite end of the torque arm but the torque arm actually kept the hub in place. So obviously 90 phase amps on the controller was a bit too much. I've since put that back down to 70 and I found that the nuts and the torque arm stays in place every time. I check every ride and it hasn't moved. Just to be safe, I've added red thread locker on the nuts here and on the other side just to give an extra added peace of mind. So since having the locked clutch, I've had the back pedal regen enabled and it's been tremendously fun commuting to work. I can't recommend it enough. I've had a lot of time tweaking it and it's brought me back to when I was riding bikes with the coaster style brakes when I was a young schoolgirl.